here you can see mic 7 embedded in the middle you can see the oil stain pattern here or cover his face for the battle damage look now from the fully armored mode i'm going to switch it to the battle damage mode Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to unbox this Hot Toys MMS 500 Iron Man Mark 7 diecast, which is based on the appearance of Iron Man in the first Avengers movie. Let's start off with the packaging. On front of the box, on top, you can see Marvel Avengers. At the center, you can see the image of Iron Man. Then here, you can see Iron Man Mark 7, then the Hot Toys, Movie Masterpiece, and Movie Masterpiece diecast logos. On the side, you can see the actual box with the Avengers logo embedded in the middle. And at the back, you can see Iron Man, the cast and crew responsible for making this figure, company and warning information, and the graphic sticker as a sign of authenticity, and lastly, the Marvel logo and barcode. I'm super excited, let's now take the box out by sliding it out. All Iron Man Dicas figure has a white styrofoam box but for, the, for Mark 7, it's a black styrofoam. Mark 7 was the first suit designed for automatic deployment and assembly. It possessed extensive flight and weapons upgrades. And it was notably or specially used during the Battle of New York in the Avengers movie. Here you can see Mark 7 embedded in the middle. Let's lift the box cover. Oh. You can see the figure and the accessories on the first tray. Under it, you can see the second tray with more accessories that are included with the figure. And here is the instruction manual which I will read later. Now we're done with the packaging, I will line up all the accessories that comes with the figure and then after that we are going to take a closer look at the Iron Man Mark 7 diecast. So here are all the accessories that are included. Let's start off with the display base stand. You can see the oil stain pattern here, a shattered glass, and a bullet casings design on this display base. And of course the Marvel logo and the Avengers Mark 7 printed in front of the base stand. Next is a display based dynamic flight pole and clip which you can use to have Iron Man floating in mid-air or use it for dynamic poses. This will support Iron Man with any poses and keep the figure from falling over. Then a bunch of batteries. It comes with 15 batteries that you can use to light up the Iron Man figure. It also comes with a screw and a plastic tool to help you in accessing the figure's panel, battery cover and of course installing the batteries. Now let's go and take a look at the two head sculpts. First is the Iron Man, head, Iron Man head sculpt with light up function. This is where you can put the batteries. Uh, you need to remove the faceplate or mask first, then screw this battery compartment and put 3 LR621 batteries. Then here are the toggle on and off switch. Then the second head sculpt, which is the battle damage helmet and head sculpt. With the authentic likeness of Tony Stark in the movie with a removable faceplate. You can see the detailed beard, wrinkles, and Tony Stark's skin texture. You can see the mechanical details on each side. This metal wire effects inside which are really fantastic. Uh, same as all the Iron Man figures, you can put this mask on top of the head, so you can display it like this. Or cover his face for the battle damage look. I really like the paint job and the battle damage effect of this head sculpt. You can see the weathering here. It's very nice. Oh, it really looks fantastic, especially the design here. I really like how they made this battle damage look because it really looks amazing just like the other Iron Man figure. So we're done with the head sculpt. Then let's go to the interchangeable hands. It comes with four pairs. First is a pair of closed fists. Then there is one pair of battle hands with light up repulsors.
Next is one pair of firing fist. And lastly, a pair of hands with articulated fingers with light up repulsors. Then for the weapons, one pair of attachable red, real like red colored laser accessories. But after taking a closer look, uh, the color is actually translucent pink that looks like lightsaber blades. I don't use these accessories that much but there are some who like posing it with this. Then a pair of detachable forearm rockets with very nice details. You can see the rocket in metallic gold and silver color. Next is a pair of missile pod that you can attach to the pod itself. You can also attach the laser effect accessories by plugging it over here for a nicer look. It really looks nice. You can see the, on the top screen what it looks like when you connect it with the Iron Man pod. You can also attach it with the firearm rockets and can display it as shown on the top of the screen. Next are the three sets of interchangeable shoulder armor. It comes in three modes, which are the missile, battle damage, and normal mode. Let's start off with the missile firing shoulder armor. It is highly detailed. You can see all the missiles in red color if the missile is ready to pop out, or you can shoot the missiles out anytime. Then next is the normal shoulder armor. Then lastly, the battle damage shoulder armor or shoulder pads. You can see the weathering effects, the wear and tear all over the armor. For me, uh, I'm going to use this or the missile firing as they will look good with the figure. Next are the three sets of interchangeable tie armor. First is the upper tie armor with missiles. Made in metallic gold and silver with a little bit of weathering effects. You can also see the missiles in the middle. Then, next is the battle damage armor. You can see the difference from the missile armor. Color is metallic gold with a little bit of silver in the middle. And lastly, the normal armor which is actually pre-installed in the figure. Then next are the two sets of interchangeable forearm armor. First, a pair of missile forearm armor which is painted in silver and red. You can plug the forearm missile over here. Let me show it to you. You can attach it here for a fully armored up mode look which I will show to you later. Then there is one pair of normal armor which is already attached to the figure. Next, let's go to Iron Man's feet which you can attach with the, when the figure is in pod mode. This is heavy because it is made of die cast material. And lastly, this chest piece for the pod mode, you can see the details, the weathering, battle damage effects of the chest plate, the combination of paint and the mechanical details which are really amazing. You can detach this and swap this with the normal mode and then interchange this battle damage chest plate to the figure. This special accessory lights up. Now, we're done with all the accessories. Let's take a closer look at the actual figure. And here we have the Mark 7. This is quite heavy because it's made of die cast, and I think it is heavier than other Iron Man die cast figure. This figure has a more masculine, more, more progressive, and a more distinct exterior design. Paintwork is a combination of light red and a little bit of gold and silver color with a very nice weathering effects all over the figure. Red is a little bit lighter which gives the figure a lighter color look. You can see this is Iron Man Mark 7's normal mode. Figure's chest panel is nice and clean but you can change it to battle damage mode which I will show you later. The chest plate can be easily removed and attached because of the magnet and the traditional clip on behind this chest plate. And here you can see the mechanical details on the chest which are also very clean and highly detailed. At the back, you should be carefully moving these flops and make sure to slowly move it because uh, they are very stiff and they pop out, pop out easily. 
Now, let's go to the lower torso. The legs, you can see they're very nice and clean. Same as the upper torso. It is very highly detailed. The painting is a combination of metallic gold, silver, and red. I also like the weathering effects. At the hips, you can see the flare compartment like what I saw in Mike's 4 and Mike 6 which can be pulled out for the figure's missile firing mode. I also saw it on Mike 2 uh, which is attachable. You can pull out the side panels on the hips and raise the side panels up. And raise the side panels up on the legs. At the back of the legs, you can also raise this up so you can see the details. And lastly, a movable ankle armor which I really do like. We're done with the normal mode. Now I'm going to switch it to the missile launching or fully armored up mode. We need to remove this shoulder panel first. Then attach the rocket pod or missile firing shoulder armor. I don't know but I'm having a hard time putting the left armor as it easily pops out. For the forearm, we need to remove the normal mode to the forearm armor. Uh, then attach the forearm missile or forearm rockets. And then the firing fist. And let's go to the lower torso. Let's remove the normal tie armor. Then install this tie armor missile version. Then fold out the flare confinement on the side. And there you have it, the fully weaponized version of Iron Man Mike 7. Depends on your preference on how you're going to pose this figure. You can also attach the laser piece accessories that I showed you a while ago uh, for a more fully armored up effect. Now, from the fully armored mode, I'm going to switch it to the battle damage mode. First, we need to remove the missile firing shoulder armor. Then change it to the battle damage shoulder pad. Again, uh, it's up to you which accessories you want to use. You can combine it with the missile firing even if the figure is in battle damage mode. Then, let's change the helmeted head into Tony Stark's head sculpt. I really like Tony Stark's head sculpt because it is a combination of helmeted head with a battle damage look. This one doesn't light up though it's okay because I really don't put the batteries and light up the figure. Then carefully remove this panel and install the battle damage shoulder panel on each side. After that, attach the battle damage chest plate. Then let's go to the tie and remove the armor and install the battle damage tie armor. Wow, I really like how it looks. Uh, it really looks amazing and I can't wait to pose it with my other figures. I 
think I will just remove the normal shoulder pad to missile firing and combine it with this uh, battle damage mode for a cooler look which I really do like. That's it for the battle damage mode. So that's it for today's video. This is Hot Toys MMS 500 Ironman Mike 7 diecast. Thank you for watching.